And then we did at least one added article page, add article page. We added a login page. And then that's pretty much it. Like we're not actually storing your login information anywhere. We just kind of want to do console out. Let's look at new site six. Some high level objectives. We're going to actually wire up the login page when your login form is submitted. Uh, makes a post uh, post request and it checks to see if you are like in the database and you're able to log in. And then we have to store in, in the response. We're going to get like in the JSON response, we're going to get a token, which is like an ID, and we're going to store that uh, that specific user in state in the app.js state, so in the very high level app.js state. So where is it? Oh. And then we're going to actually modify app.nav, where our nav bar is located at, to show an actual login link. So when you click on that link, it takes you to the login page, which you already have wired up. But if a user is not logged in, it's going to show login. And if the user is logged in, it's going to show log out. So there's going to be some logic that show tests whether or not a user is logged in or not. <clears throat> and then also in the ad in the nav bar. So some people like I personally didn't put the ad article uh, link in the nav bar. So I'm gonna have to go back and like refactor that. Um, so that add article add an article link that's supposed to be in the nav bar will only show if a user is logged in. So you can technically only add an article if you're a login user. So single, <laughs> the single page apps, the authentication login flow, something like this. The user navigates to the login page, enters their credentials, and hitting submit, the login credentials are set to the API endpoint of the web service. The API checks the credentials to see if they're valid. And then an access token is returned. Requests made to protected API endpoints require a user's to access token. If a token is not included in a request to a protected endpoint or the token has expired, we get like a 401 response. When an API request is made with a valid token, the to token expiration is extended or whatever. The user is inactive for a long, certain period of time, the token will expire and the user will be asked to log in again. So when you're like log into certain sites, I don't know if Facebook has it, but a lot of like corporate sites, if you don't have any activity, your access token will expire and you'll be automatically lost. That's kind of how the access token works. So <clears throat> you'll want to copy over the, like the work you did from new site five in this challenge for this, for this specific challenge. We need to copy and paste the entire source directory from the new site five repo and paste it into the directory into this repo. So I've already done that for a new site six. I copied over my source directory. I'm going to have to make do some refactoring based off of these requirements, but we walk through that together. So after copying over the source directory, run npm run update. So I'm in new site six ls. Got my readme API package.json public source file. NPM run, what is it? I'm just gonna copy and paste that. Whenever there's code snippets, just copy and paste it to avoid errors in your, correct. <coughs> All right, lectures, must have added some stuff. Users API test JS and app.nav.test. So add some test files to look like. Once you've performed these steps, run npm install and npm run start. And then we'll verify everything's working correctly. I'm crossing my fingers that it does. Uh, npm install. This might take a little while. So here's my source. We have API, pages, app.js. Pages. We have our add article page, and a login, our section page. Hopefully everything works. Does anybody have any questions, comments about yesterday's challenge?
Nothing. Any exciting plans this weekend. Ooh, a concert. All right, we're almost done here, hopefully. It takes a while, but all right, let's get started. So NPM installed, NPM run start. Thank you. I'm gonna clear this. How do I zoom in? There we go. So I'm gonna NPM run start, NPM run. Cross my fingers. Look up. Let's open up a new page. Open up the console. I prefer to mine hat and have mine on the side. Other people like them on the bottom. Can't resolve React strap. Okay, that means I haven't installed it. So npm run or npm install React strap. Which probably should already have that installed in the package.json file so it automatically installs for you. What else did it say? Try this again, I'm gonna clear. Oh, that's not clear. NPM. Come on. Starting the development server. Create a production one. There we go. So I'm gonna clear this. So here's my article page or new site page. Let's do some refactoring right away because uh, it says we want to have the article, add article link in the nav bar. Where did it say that? Right here? Yeah. So where is my add article? In pages, the, ac the actual link. Oh, the actual link. The routes. Right? Is it in routes? The home page. Here, group, class. All right here, is this it? Add an article. Let's just move this. I'm going to remove it from here and put it into my <coughs> app nav. So we have our login. I'm gonna put it down here. And I don't want it, let, I'm just gonna make it kind of easy. I'm gonna do it the same. I don't want it to be a, this is all bootstrap, a bootstrap button. So I'm just gonna do the link to, uh, where does it go to? Oh, hi, link. Should it go to uh, add article? Is that right? Okay, fix that. There we go. Slash. Save it. I'm gonna refresh. See where it goes. Add article. It takes me out. It looks really bad. Let's change it. Add an article. I just like one article. And then. That uh, kind of looks better. Cool. See if it works. Does back. Search for article. No strum. Cool. I log in. I'm on Burgundy. Uh, uh, Tom123123. Tom123123. Cool. <laughs> making sure kind of everything works. Okay. 
right, cool, everything seems to be working. Let's go back. User navigates initial setup. We kind of already did that. So far, we've only utilized a single type of object model from the API, the article. In today's challenge, we'll be dealing with a new model, the user model. While it's not required, I consider it to be helpful to separate JavaScript modules for interacting with different models of data that APIs can return. So it's always good to, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with just with like articles, have like an articles API file. If you're dealing with just anything with users, have a users API table or a API file and just keep APIs uh, separate. All right, so again, so source API, users API, a dummy file and test file can be found. I don't know what, okay. There's, I guess there's a new test file for the users API. Inside this user API module, we can create a function called login, which takes in credentials object. The login function accepts a parameter called yep, the structure. So the log or the credential object should look something like this. Everyone on the same page. So let's go to um, just read a little bit more. The function should create a request that almost looks identical to add an article. Function called a post request made to cool. All right. I'm gonna close these for the time being. I'm gonna navigate to my API. Users API. So we already got the skeleton for you. And it says it should also kind of resemble the add an article one. Yikes. Mine's ugly. I don't even think mine is. This. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this down here, comment it out. I'm just gonna come out the, or grab this, the response. That response, API articles, probably shouldn't go to that though. So it looks like it goes, it's called a post request should be made to HTTP API users, forward slash login, question mark, include user. So I'm gonna copy that over to here. Complete the credentials should be stringified and passed in the request body and the content type should be set to application JSON. Turn a fetch promise that will resolve later. All right, let's see this. So credential object should be passed into a JSON stringify method. Does that look good? Um, I'm just gonna actually return this for right now. See if this works. Return a wait fence right now. Yeah, so right now or not, but we might change that later depending on how we want it to function. So I'm gonna open up the console. We've got a bunch of errors. What the hell is all that stuff? Oh, all right. What the hell just happened? Oh, okay, I'm clear. So we have a unit test in the users. All right, where's this unit test at? Right here. How do I run a unit test for that specific file? Oh, Jesus. Uh, run test users api.test.js. Is that right? I'm just going to declare right, the actual file. What the hell? Run test. Please work. Hey. Whoa, that's never happened before. <laughs> oh, man. 
All right, cool. So let's see what we just did. So we created a login API that takes in a credentials, which look like email and password and makes a fetch request to API users login with a query like include equal user as some headers, method post, then JSON stringify credentials object. Pretty much the same thing that we do down here with the article object. Now your article, add article API might look differently than mine. That's totally okay. This is just the way I did it. Um, it's not right or wrong. As long as you get back the correct response. Awesome, all right. Storing the user object token. When a valid credential to the user API token endpoints are provided, the API response will look something like this. It's a big object, has an ID with this weird number, let of characters. This is the token. Yeah, this, whatever. This, I don't know what this is. Oh, okay, thank you. What is it? Time to That's basically how long this session lasts. Awesome. So yep, Justin said this is time to live. This is like the session timer. Uh, the user ID, the actual user object that's being returned, like the username, email, and the ID. You want to call user API. So here it looks like we have to do something else. You want to call the user API login from the source pages login page, but you will need to store the response object, this thing, in the top level state of your app inside app.js. Okay, like I don't, I don't know how to do that. So um, <laughs> this is because the data will need to be passed down into other pages. Okay, that makes sense. So we're gonna have to pass down the state in this app.js down to other components. But we're calling the API from the login page. So we're gonna have to see how to do that. In order to store the user object, in app.js's state, you'll need to A, create a class method in app.js that accepts the user object as a parameter and set it to into state and then pass that method down into the login page. So it looks like we have to store this in the, so since we have to actually store state or store the user object in the app.js's state, we're gonna have to use this handle login method in the app.js. So where is app.js? Right here. So in here, where should I put this? This is a class component. Where should I put this method? Right underneath app. Right Same. underneath app? Yeah. Okay. So handle login, it's gotta be put at the top level app component because we need this user to be passed down into other components that we use throughout the application. So what else do we need to do since we're setting state? We need to, declare state. We need to declare state. How do I do that? Just okay. user and let's just put it null for the time being. Okay, is that, all right. Passing this method into the login page component does require you to do some functionality available from React Router's component that we haven't done before. So essentially we're gonna to have to pass down this handle login into this login page. This is my component. I called it login in the, uh, I think in the, in the actual the file name, it's like login page, but I called it login. So how do we, like normally I would not know how to pass this down, this component down. Normally we'd pass it in as props at some point, like handle login, but that's not, this convention isn't how we normally do it. We normally, we'll, 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 we'll walk through it together. So normally we would do it like, like uh, where's a good example? Like right here, we pass down, like return, mm -hmm. and then pass it down in here. But since we're doing it all on the routes, there's another way we have to do it. 
So up until now, routes we've designed have utilized two props, path and component. We view it as path and then the component. We'll continue to use path prop to define the route path, but we need to use a new property called render to pass data down data or props into the components our routes will display. So the component prop that we'll use thus far accepts a component as a value. The render prop, however, accepts a function that returns a component. So it looks like we've got to create. So here's is the, the function that we're going to be creating. The function, and it returns a component. And then in, in place of the component property, we're going to use the render property. And we're going to call that function, that render login page function. So we're, okay, so where, how does render login page taken in props in this example? Right here. So login, this is the component, the login page, or the login component. It takes in props just how we've been doing it. The so login page takes in props, but what about the render login page parameter props? What is that? I think that's automatically just passes down. From the app? From, from the app, app JS. App. Yep. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to actually copy this whole thing over. So when I'm just doing JavaScript and not writing functions, where can I, where in this component, in a class component, can I just like write JavaScript <coughs> freehand? Inside the render, outside the return statement. Inside the render. So under here, but outside the return. So in here? Or above the class. Yeah, but that, so you kind of want to avoid writing JavaScript up here because your entire application essentially will kind of have access to that. And so we want all our variables to be confined to the class. So this render login page takes in props and it returns. So my, my component's called login. It takes in history, props.history. You've kind of seen that before the, when you're, when you're, dot history dot push when you want to push to another. Then we also take in the handle login method and return, give it this dot handle log. <clears throat> and in place of this route, let's move this. How do I move routes? Oh, damn it. So essentially it's gonna go, what the hell's going on? Why did it do all that? So in place of, this is my old route, the component, but the new route's gonna, instead, in place of component, we're gonna use the property render and render the login page. Render login page. There we go. Let's get rid of that. So if everything, worked correctly, my login page, where's my login page? Props should be now have uh, that handle login. So I'm just gonna console log this dot props. I'm gonna refresh, oh, I gotta start the server. Restarting the server. Take some more. I'm gonna click the home. <clears throat> so when I could click the login page and when it renders the login, I should see this dot props. So we've got history and handle login. This is for coming from the login page right here. And I'm passing the props in via this render login page, take some props and we're returning the login page. We're passing in the history and the handle login. The handle login 
is coming from uh, the app js's method and the login which will set do call this dot set state and we'll set the user to the state so so, so because the login method through because the login component through the render login page is, method is a part of app.js. Yep. If you change the state in login, it yep. will affect it at the app level. Right? It's not going to change the state in login, it's actually going to change the state in app.js. So okay. it's actually calling this method up here, essentially, and it's going to change the state. And I'm going to be able to call it by doing like this dot props dot handle login. Which you passed through. So I passed this prop. And it's changing state in that one. Yep. And then, cool. and then this render dot login page is being added to this render property in our route. So we're actually rendering calling like this function that's going to render this login page. Where is it? Where is it? All right. <clears throat> and the function provided the render prop of the route is a single argument that will be provided in this example. This object contains all the props that React Router provides to components. Okay. The data can be passed down into the component that the function returns. I've just done that. Now that props that history is being passed down into the login component. In addition, things within the scope of the class can now be passed. So within the scope of the app.js can be passed to the component that the function returns state. Yeah, render method at this point, assume there's a login form. Okay, we've kind of all done this. <clears throat> so at this point, let's assume our login page has a login form, which it does. The forms on submit event is calling an, an event handler, which we are currently doing in our login page, which is this login event handler. Uh, this is all just my stuff. I don't need that there. So in your login submit on submit form, invoke the user API login. Of course, you need to parse out the email and password fields from your form, store them into an object, and then pass the object to user's API. Okay, so we've got our username and password. Let's just, uh, I'm gonna comment that out because I don't want me to, I don't want to push to the home page. I just want to console log the username and password, which we kind of already did before. I'm gonna refresh. Tom, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm gonna clear this. Right there, Tom123123. So now I want to call this user API login. Right? Yeah. So how do I do that? So I've got is it users API login? Users API that login it takes in an object. Uh, this is probably not a good. Yeah, I'm going to change the username to email. Email. And I'm going to also change this to, to email. Let's just confirm that. Everything works still. Refresh. Tom, one, two, three, one, two, three. Clear that. Submit. Tom, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this takes in email, a dictionary object, email, comma, the password, password. So based off of Up here, this is what needs to be passed in for the login credentials. And this user already is in our database, so we can log in with this user. 
All right, let's see what's next. Uh, in the user event, callback function, call the function you pass into the login page. So what we get back from this, we need to pass into the, this dot props. So let's do let response equal that. And this dot props the handle login response. Let's first, before we do that, let's just console log the response. Hopefully we get something back. What was that one username that we can use? Let's use this one, John at Open Sesame. Okay, it looks like we got a pending promise. It says resolved. What, what, what do we have to do with that? Let's do, uh, what is it, async, to return, oh wait, does that work? Okay, again, login, john at go.com, open, ses, did I spell that right? Oh, wait, no, still pending promise. What if I return let response equal fetch and then return async await return response.json? I don't know. I'm just trying things now. Let's see. John at doe.com, open, I hate that, it should just be still pending promise. Hmm. What else we got? Uh, there's a way to do this. Is it the login page? Oh, maybe I have to await. Like that async open uh, john at com. spelled it wrong. Oh, okay. So I call an async function here. Say, oh, wait. In there and be, is it because I, I do async here in my API and I await I return a JSON response response dot JSON and then in my login I also do the await I wait for this to go get a response back and then I return this response or console log response so let's look what actually returned I'm gonna get rid of the, these articles I don't like that. Home page. Home page, line 35. Get out of here. Clear that. Let's try that one more time. John at go.com. Open sesame. Oh, I must have spelled it wrong. I know. There we go. So this is what we get back. We get back a created ID, which is the token. A time till, what is it? Time to live. Time to live. And then the actual user, John Doe, username. 
message on an email. So we're getting the data back. Now can we async await maybe this one? Just.props.handle login. So it's getting the correct response. We're calling this.props.handle login, which is being passed down from the app.js page in this render login when it's returning handle login equals this dot handle login. So we're getting our user, which is an object. Uh, I kind of disappeared, but uh, yeah. And then it's gonna call set state and set that all that, that user object to state. So let's console log state. Console log this dot state. Now this is in the app JS. This is the highest level of our app. And I'm going to actually do that. So I think it reloads the page. So I'm going to refresh. Here's our initial user state at, at the app JS level. A login john at doe.com open sesame. Okay, cool. Then here's our next state. User. Here's the actual state of app.js. Then here's the props from the login page. So, so we're logged in now. Let's try to do, uh, I'm gonna refresh. So every time you refresh it, the user gets logged out. I'm gonna log in with somebody like that's not me. Post user include 401 or 401 unauthorized. So this user does not exist. So I'm giving getting an unauthorized, but it's still setting state, like a user error state. All right, that's cool. We can do something with that if we want to conditional render or something like that. Any questions up to this point? In the API, already yeah. Users. Yeah. So when you want to do, if you actually want to see where these users are located at, this is, uh, if you go up to, API, I think it's common. Oh, is it server? Boot? No. Um, see where we can actually change a user. Authentication. It's not in boot. Component config, data sources. No. Anyway, we can actually actually change what users we want in our app. Got to be in models. <coughs> yeah. No, like there's actually John. You can actually find where John is located. Oh, here. No. So let's go review what ha what we just did. We created a login that takes in a username and actually authenticates this user in our database via an API. This is what that API specifically looks like. So, and we wanna pass our user all the way up to the top level of our app because we're gonna want our user, our authenticated user to be passed down to different components because we might, because we're gonna to wanna to do stuff in those components that only a registered login user can do, which is post an article, add an article. That's why user is a state. Yep. So we created a handle login method that sets the state of our user. We need to pass this handle login method into our login uh, component. So we need to pass it down at props in some way. Uh, React Router gives us this render property that takes in a function that returns a component. So this render login page takes in 
this that props at this level and returns the, my login component and it passes in that handle login method as props with this dot handle login within my login i've got my form that i can log uh, log in a user when i submit that form it takes in the email password and then uh, does reaches out to our API with the credentials, email, password, goes in here, make sure it's in our database, fetch or await, fetch, grabs it, response, and we return the response JSON. Once we have the response JSON, we await this prop.props.handle login, which calls this method, which takes in <laughs> that response. We take that response, we set it to user state. So right here, when valid credentials to the API, users login, endpoint are provided, the API response will look like something like this. We've just done all that. We've done this on your login form submit event handler also redirect back to the page to the home page. So we want to redirect, which I think I had before. I log in here. Cool. Add a console log this state, to, which I already did, under the function. All right, so we already did all that. Authenticated article submission. So if you attempt to submit an article from your app in its current state, you'll notice that the API will turn a 401 unauthorized status code. Why is that? So let's just try it, let's see what happens. React app, I'm home. Add article, some title, some byline, abstract. Okay, there was an error when submitting your code. This is my error handling. That's just what I did. It says post API articles unauthorized. Okay, that's what's expected. First, let's update the add article API that takes in a token from the authorized, the logged in users, that long string of numbers and characters. Is that part of the user state? Yes. So in our, where's the article API? So the add article, we take in a token, but we need to do something with that token. Let's keep reading. When an API endpoint requires, requires authorization, authentication, it's customary to provide this data via a header called authorization. Add a new property to the header object and add article. So adding this into, yep, right there, into comma, token. So this is a key that in our header for authorization so when the HTTP request goes through, it will search for this authorization. If it has this keyword, it's gonna take in that token. That's the request that it's not that yeah, so if it doesn't have a token or if it's an invalid token, then it won't do it. All right, it says there's a articles, there's a unit test, we can test that. Oh geez, that's where that, all right, so let's test that. Articles API, the clear. NPM run test the articles API dot test dot JS. It's probably gonna get me all wrong. Ugh, why does it do that? Let's look at that articles. Close all this crap. Where's the article? Submit an article when calling. So I'm just gonna comment out all these. Because I don't care about those at this point. 
It's just this last one I want to try to get it to pass. Why doesn't it work? There's some weird uh, behavioral. So one failed. Why does it fail? Just as throw air. Let's just see if it works. Might be something wrong with the test. Articles. Jeez, test. Yeah. Screw this test for the time being. Mm -hmm. Uncut promise failed to fetch. Uh oh. Oh, it's because the app's not running. Let's take, uh, be back at 11 and we'll finish it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it. Let's finish up just like we should. Oh, I really thought you were going to go there.